Greetings. We're a couple minutes late. We couldn't get Facebook to work, but we got it now. We had to restart our phone. This is Preacher Rick, live at five with the sermon. Now is the time. Now is the time. And I and I've probably preached a sermon by that same title before. I'm not sure, but that's all right. It's a different sermon this time. God put it on my heart in the book of Saint Mark in the wee hours of the morning this morning, and I just got really blessed reading it, and I'm sure you will too. There's two words that are very similar to each other. Uh, they're synonymous to one another. Sort of like street and road are synonymous to each other. They mean about the same thing. Well, they are, uh, the words are straightway and immediately. Straightway and immediately. And I want to look at those words just for a moment before we preach. And I want to see why they're written so many times in the first few chapters of Mark. 16 or 17 times. I, re- I, I think I counted both ways. But I wasn't trying to be extremely precise. But at least 16 times, straightway and immediately, in the beginning of the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ is recorded. So immediately is sometimes very important. There's some things we can't put off. There's some things that shouldn't be put off, that should be taken care of immediately in life. And that's what we're going to look at. In the first chapter of St. Mark, in the 10th verse, the first time we see it, it says it's straightway. Coming up out of the water, it's talking about Jesus' baptism. Straight immediately after he came out, that's when God sent the dove descending uh, uh, upon him, and there came a voice, and God spoke. Uh, so notice that, and, and, and uh, nail that down in your mind. And then, uh, right, right on down a couple of verses to verse 12, we see, and immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. No, no delay. There wasn't any delay in Jesus' ministry once it started. Uh, he didn't uh, let anything delay him. It was straightway and immediately. And if you look on down in verse 18, it says, And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him when he went to them, uh, uh, calling his disciples out. And we'll not get into all the detail there, but, uh, you know, he, that was Simon and Andrew. And, and straightway uh, they forsook, immediately in other words, they didn't waste any time. They didn't have to pray about it. They didn't have to talk to mom and dad about it. Uh, uh, they didn't have to do anything. Uh, uh, God had already put it on their hearts. When God uh, puts it on your heart, uh, uh, it's correct. Like what it says. So it says uh, straight away he called them uh, in verse 20. Uh, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship. They left their dad in the ship. They they didn't delay. They didn't wait till next week or till they got the, the fish in with their dad. Uh, it's not mean, meaning in any way you forsake your families. Uh, that's not what it's meaning. It's meaning that we don't put off what God puts on our heart, uh, uh, thank God. Uh, uh, so we see it's just a, a straight way and immediately over and over here in the beginning of his ministry. Get down to verse 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad. Uh, well, it wouldn't have been. Uh, his fame wouldn't have been spreading, and the gospel wouldn't have been getting down if, if the, he had delayed. Uh, but he set the bar for us, and he wants us to not waste our time uh, uh, here on earth. Uh, he, uh, redeeming the time, the Bible teaches us, for the days are evil. Saving the time God gives us uh, by using it, as you've heard me say many times wisely. Uh, so uh, in verse 31, we see immediately again. Uh, And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and he ministered uh, unto them. And that was Peter's uh, uh, mother-in-law. Jesus healed him, uh, and immediately the fever uh, uh, left. Uh, There was no delay. We just see uh, that things were underway. And uh, a lot of times we delay things, and we put things to the side, and we think, oh, well, tomorrow's a better day. Uh, But tomorrow may never come. Uh, uh, So we must be very cautious and understanding and what we're learning here. Uh, if you get down to verse 42, and we're still in chapter 1 of Mark. Uh, see what I mean? How many times it's there? Uh, it says, And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him. Uh, uh, so when Jesus healed the leper, it was immediate. Uh, everything was happening right then. It wasn't uh, later. It wasn't, a no, there was no delay, uh, but it was happening. You get on down to the next chapter, we're still in Mark. Uh, just a few verses down in verse 2, it says, A straight way, uh, many were gathered together. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, we see they were, were gathered together, uh, and it said, Insomuch there was no room to receive them. Well, uh, 
if there had been any delays, those people would have dispersed way before that. Uh, probably been home cooking their dinner or something. Uh, uh, maybe some of them going this way and some that way, and one killed over there uh, doing this or that, and another dying from a heart attack over here. Uh, and uh, because it was delayed, uh, uh, they wouldn't have heard the gospel. But because it wasn't delayed, uh, they heard it. See what I mean? Uh, there's some things that just shouldn't be put off. Uh, uh, so we see in verse 8 of that same chapter, now we're in Mark 2, uh, it says, And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? Uh, uh, he understood immediately what they were thinking. Uh, and then in verse 12, And immediately he arose, took up the bed, uh, and went forth before them all, I, I thank God forever, and so they were all amazed. So uh, uh, immediately uh, uh, he perceived what was going on, uh, and he uh, told, he healed the guy, uh, I thank God because of the faith, and immediately uh, right after he healed him, he arose. Uh, there was no delay. Uh, I just really felt strong this morning as I was reading this, and I had never seen it uh, uh, with this from this perception. Uh, these few first chapters of Mark, and God revealed it to me this morning, uh, real early. Uh, uh, so we see it was just one after another, uh, and uh, I get on down to chapter three, and in verse six it says that the Pharisees went forth and straightway took counsel. Uh, uh, and basically, uh, they wanted to destroy him, it says at the end of that verse. So they, the, the enemy, uh, you'll see, will not uh, delay. You'll see that the enemy, uh, that Satan, uh, he's not going to delay. So if you delay, he's going to have a big advantage on you uh, because he's not going to delay. Uh, and that's what was going on here with the Pharisees that were going about uh, destroying Jesus. Uh, uh, but I'm so glad, thank God, if God be for you, who can be against you, aren't you? Uh, and, and I see uh, uh, there's other times I'm sure we could find it, but I want to look that we'll preach a little bit. Uh, uh, but it says in verse 4, uh, five, I mean, of chapter four, and some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up uh, because it had no depth of earth, and that's the parable of the, of the uh, uh, different soils that the uh, uh, the uh, seed fell on, and it's talking about the heart uh, and whether or not the word of God as a seed falls on good places in your heart. Uh, uh, but it says immediately it sprang up, uh, and it does. Uh, uh, but if it has good soil. Uh, thank God it'll take root. Uh, it's so important that we understand the urgency uh, uh, that God is showing us uh, here in this scripture today. Uh, uh, and it's very important uh, uh, that we understand how important it is uh, that right now is what we have, and right now is maybe all we ever will have. Uh, so over in Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter, he said, and it says, for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. What is a time accepted? It's a time right now why God is there. Uh, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee, uh, helped thee, in other words. Uh, uh, behold, now, there's that word now. Now, the word now is immediate. Uh, it's also straightway. It's also another synonym, you might say, uh, uh, to immediate. Uh, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We all know that now is what we have. Yesterday's gone and tomorrow may not be. We have right now. And he said now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Thank God forever. And I'm so glad for that, aren't you? So glad that we have right now because if we didn't have now we'd be in trouble uh it says over in the lamentations the third chapter uh it says in the 27th verse it is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth uh well uh what does that have to do with it preacher it has a lot to do with it i'll tell you why uh because your youth is when god gives you strength and you're alive and stronger and 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 blossoming so it's the time that god gives you now because if you turn back to my favorite verse of the bible which i've shared before ecclesiastes uh, 12 1 it says remember now and so you see how these link together now in our youth 
It says, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, old age when you're all crippled up and, and the body is uh, has, has just treating you in evil ways. While the evil days come not, nor the years go nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. And I'm heading in the, that category myself where uh, the flesh, uh, as far as the body goes, it's hard to have pleasure daily when you're always in pain and you get older and things of that nature. Uh, and then, then you look back to uh, the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, and we all know that one, at least most of us do, uh, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, uh, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. And it goes on. So we see that time is very important. So immediately, uh, we need to, to uh, serve God immediately. And if God puts something on your heart to do for him, you need to get on top of it. Uh, don't delay. I, now, that's not to say we don't prepare. Uh, we're not leaving out preparations. If God wanted you to be a missionary, for you to prepare to go overseas, for you to prepare for this, there's a lot of difference between preparing and delaying. Uh, so don't mix the two up. We're not talking about uh, things that God may have put in your heart to prepare for and to grow in his grace and knowledge in and to get ready for. But we're talking about things that he puts on your heart to do now that you delay. And you know you can do it. You can pick up the phone and call someone that maybe you need to invite to church or someone you need to pray for at the hospital or just call them up and encourage them. And you need to do it now. They may not be there tomorrow. Or you may not be here yet to encourage them tomorrow. So see, there's a big difference. And what we're talking about is delaying what you can do and is already on your heart. And Jesus didn't delay. If there was something needed done, he did it immediately, straightway. Straightway he did it, and immediately he did it. Sixteen or seventeen times there in the first four chapters of Mark, we read those two words. So let's think about that just for a moment. Think about how time... Uh, is our uh, life uh, that God gave us the building blocks of. Uh, we have moments that we put together. It's so important that we use them. Boy, my time is just expiring so fast today when I'm so excited about these verses. Uh, but I still am. And I'm going to take another minute or two and preach just a little bit uh, to you that need to understand what God is dealing with you today. Uh, and you need to immediately get on your knees. Uh, uh, whether you're dry, pull over if you have to. If you can't pull over, you're riding with someone. Get on your knees in your heart. Uh, in other words, man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. Uh, and it's not the altar at the church that saves you. Uh, it's the altar that the heart goes to. Are you willing to bow down before Jesus. Uh, bow your head to Jesus. Uh, pray to Jesus. If you can't even uh, close your eyes right now, just pray to him and, uh, and close your thoughts of this world uh, and let the Spirit of God, uh, thank God, take over in your heart. Uh, and you'll be born again when you truly repent of your sins. Now is the accepted time. This uh, is the day of salvation. Bless God forever. Uh, aren't you glad for a God like that glory hallelujah to his name thank God for Jesus uh, oh child of God uh, uh, let God have his way in your life uh, uh, live for him now uh, uh, don't put off things that are important in your life uh, don't put off till tomorrow what will be too late uh, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth while you can serve him with all your heart soul mind and strength this is Preacher Rick. Until next time, beloved, that's what God put on my heart. Not a fiery message, but a very important one. And I hope it's good for you. And I hope you hide it in your heart. Until next time, God bless you. Share it. Get it out there to as many as you can if you would. We love you all. Bye-bye.